First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. We shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good morning. I am a rental agency. How can I help? Oh, hello. I'm ringing about some problems I'm having with my apartment. Yes, of course. If I can just get a few details first. What's your name? Don Chester. How do you spell that? C-H-E-S-T-E-R OK. And the address? Apartment 4, 18 Ruby Lane. Ruby Lane. And that's in? In Newbridge. Oh, yes. I know the one. Could I ask how long is the lease? It's for a year. And you moved in on? Last week. On 24th May. Good. Thanks. Now, what are the problems you found? Well, nothing too serious, you know, but a few things that have been building up over a few days. Yes, of course. Well, the first thing is the fridge. The seal on the door is decayed, and we have a small child and need to keep milk cool, so we need to get that done straight away. OK, that's the fridge for immediate repair. And then there's a little problem with the gas water heater. Uh-huh. The switch is broken. Right. It's not serious, and we can still use it. But if you can send somebody over in the next couple of weeks or so, that'd be great. OK, I've got that. Then we're worried about the front windows. Are they broken? No, but there are no blinds on them. And, you know, with privacy these days. And when would you like those done? Oh, it's not really urgent. But there are only thin curtains on the windows and people are walking past. Yes, we'll have those done for you by next week. Don't worry. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. There are only thin curtains on the windows and people are walking past. Yes. We'll have those done for you by next week. Don't worry. And then there's the front door lock. It's getting quite annoying. It often jams and we sometimes have to fiddle with it for minutes before we can get in the apartment. I'd really like to get that fixed up right away. That's no problem. And then the last thing is the shower curtain. It's torn. Oh, right. We can get a new one and have it to you in the next week, if that's all right with you. Yes, that's OK. Anything else? No, that's all. OK, fine. What we'll do now is get someone over to you this afternoon if you're home. Well, I'll be out for a short while. OK. Tell us your preferred times. Well, the best time is about two o'clock. I'd have to check that with him. And if he can't get there then, what would be your second preference? Oh, any time up to 6pm would be fine. OK, I've got that. Great. Thanks very much. That's fine. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a tour guide giving information about a shopping district. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15.
As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 15. This afternoon, we'll visit the city's shopping district. Several blocks in the area are closed to car traffic, and I know you'll enjoy walking around there. I'd like to give you an overview of the district now, since you'll be on your own once we get there. You'll see on this map here that the shopping district consists of two streets, Pear Street, which runs north and south, and Cherry Street, which crosses Pear Street right here. Let's start our tour here on Pear Street, where the star is. This star marks the Harbor View Bookstore. It's very popular among locals as well as tourists. You can buy a range of books of local interest as well as a variety of magazines and newspapers. It's directly across the street from the city library, which is also worth a visit. It's in one of the oldest buildings in the city and contains, among other things, an interesting collection of rare books. Now, moving up Pear from the bookstore toward Cherry, the next building on the left is the Pear Cafe. You'll notice it's right on the corner of Pear and Cherry Streets. It's a great place to relax while enjoying a delicious cup of coffee or tea. You can talk with friends or read quietly. They have a variety of books and magazines available. From the windows of the cafe, you can look right across Cherry Street for a lovely view of city gardens. It's a rather small garden, but it contains a variety of exotic plants and flowers. Let's leave the cafe and cross Pear Street. On the opposite corner, we're at Caldwell's Clothing Store, which you might also want to visit. They sell both men's and women's fashions from countries around the world. Continuing down Cherry Street, the next building on the right, after Caldwell's, is the Souvenir Shop. Stop in here to get maps and books about the local area, as well as T-shirts and postcards with pictures of the city. Now, we cross Cherry Street and we're at the Art Gallery, one building down from the corner. Here you can see, and of course, purchase, many fine paintings and sculptures by local artists. Let's keep going down Cherry Street toward the harbor. On the left, right after the gallery, is Harbor Park. It's a lovely place, and it's certainly worth spending some time there. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Harbor Park was built on land donated to the city by Captain Jones, a lifelong resident of this city. Captain Jones designed the park himself, and it was built in 1876. Exactly in the center of the park, a statue of Captain Jones was erected, and it's still standing there today. It shows Captain Jones on the bow of his ship. After viewing the statue, you can follow the path that goes through the woods just behind. It will lead you to a lovely garden, in the middle of which is a fountain. This is a nice place to enjoy a few quiet moments. If you still feel like walking, continue on to the far end of the garden. There you'll find a wooden staircase which will take you down to the harbor. You might enjoy the view of the boats from there. There's also a walking path along the water which will eventually bring you back up to Cherry Street. 
You can see that there's plenty to do in this part of the city. The bus leaves at 1.30. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a phone conversation giving information about a health and fitness centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hello. Hello. Is that Miss Heidi Jones? Yes. Good morning, Miss Jones. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to tell you about the Seven Oaks Health and Fitness Centre, which is in your suburb. Would that be convenient? OK. Well, the centre's not far from you. It's on the corner of Marion Street and Giles Street and has a large car park. It's open every day of the week, opening on weekdays at 6am and at 9am at the weekend. It closes at 9.30pm Monday to Friday and on Saturday at 4pm and Sunday at 2pm. We also have childcare Monday to Saturday from 9 in the morning until midday for a small extra charge. So you can leave your children in safe hands while you attend one of our classes, or perhaps have a swim, or if you just want to relax in the spa and sauna or steam room. Talking of classes, we have a very wide range which are designed to suit all different levels of fitness and individual needs. I mentioned the pool just now. Well, in addition to swimming laps or just relaxing, we also offer aqua aerobic classes, which are 45 minute classes that use the therapeutic effects of water. This provides a very safe and effective exercise and is suitable for all fitness levels, as well as being a lot of fun. Many people who haven't been exercising for a while start in the aqua classes, as do people who need to take care after hospital surgery, for example. These classes are very popular and are scheduled every weekday, Monday to Friday, and on Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning. Another very popular activity in the pool area is learning to swim and these swimming classes are held at 4pm every weekday and in the mornings at the weekend. By the way, they're open to both adults and children of any age. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, it would take too much of your time to tell you in detail about all our programs as we have a very wide range of activities at different times. However, I'll just outline some of them. 
Our super circuit classes are extremely popular and you get a good aerobic workout while toning your muscles. They're easy to learn as you combine using hydraulic equipment with exercises guaranteed to give you a good cardio workout. The teachers are very good and there's a fun atmosphere. And the classes are very effective in assisting weight loss, relieving stress, lowering blood pressure and generally increasing fitness. Oh, and I haven't mentioned our range of aerobic and step classes of different types which suit all levels. Our specially designed aerobics room holds over 55 people and our highly qualified and trained staff can advise you as to which class might suit you. We are inviting you to a free one-week trial period when you can come and try any of the classes or activities before you make the decision to join. By the way, there is also a large and very well-equipped gym where we offer free fitness assessments and you can have an individual program designed just for you. Also, the cardiovascular room has the latest range of machines which help you burn fat, increase your fitness or just warm up. They're very popular as you can forget all about the calorie burning by watching your favourite music videos on TV while you exercise. Right now we have a very special new member joining fee offer which allows two memberships for the price of one. A real bargain. So if you can, bring along a friend who'd like to get fit as well in time for summer. Come along and try us out. You can meet the staff. Try out some of the classes for a week, absolutely free. And then, if you like us, sign up for only $110 each for six months. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the centre and I hope we'll see you there soon, Heidi. I'll put one of our brochures in the mail for you right now. Bye for now. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You're going to hear a lecture on some useful information for your travelling around Britain. Listen to the first part of the lecture and complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon and welcome to the session on Britain. This afternoon I would like to provide some useful information for you about travelling around Britain. Britain has over 700 tourist information centres. You will find them at major ports, airports, stations, historic landmarks and towns and holiday centres so just look out for this sign that says Tourist Information. The staff will be able to answer your holiday queries as well as provide essential maps, guides and brochures. Tourist Information Centres at major ports and airports in London and addresses of British Tourist Authority European offices are all listed on the Tourist Information Centres. Now let's talk about the telephone in Britain. 
You know, Britain is well supplied with public telephones. Street kiosks take ten pence coins. In city centres, mainline railway stations, airports, and central London underground stations, payphones and card phones are in operation. For the latter, small plastic phone cards are used, and these come in ten, twenty, forty, one hundred, and two hundred units, and can be bought at post offices, news kiosks, station bars, and shops where the green and white card phone sign is displayed. When using the different public telephone systems, make sure you read the dialing instructions carefully. Now, let's see the banks in Britain. There are 24-hour banks at London's two main airports. One is Heathrow, and the other is Gatwick. Otherwise, banks are normally open from 9:30 to 15:30 hours, Monday to Friday. Barclays Bank and National Westminster Bank offer a Saturday morning service at some of their branches. National Jara Bank. Has 42 bureaux de change located in post offices throughout the country in main tourist areas. Opening hours are nine o'clock to 17:30 weekdays, nine o'clock to 12:30 Saturday mornings. One exception to this is the Trafalgar Square office, whose opening hours are eight o'clock to 20 o'clock weekdays and Saturdays, and 10 o'clock to 17 o'clock on Sundays. The bureau de change services. Are available to overseas visitors. Visitors can change their money there. You can also change money at bureaux de change, large hotels, department stores, and travel agents. Be sure to check in advance the rate of exchange and the commission charged, as these vary considerably. Wherever possible, you are advised to use a bank or a bureau de change, which conforms to the BTA code of conduct. In most cases, this is indicated by display of the code. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.